Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I will be showing the process of digitizing film uh, with mirrorless camera. I will talk about Lomo Digitalizer Plus, uh, Intrepid and negative supply film scanning systems. Basically share my experience from using them. I won't be focusing on converting negatives into actual photos here. I still use Negative Lab Pro for that and my process uh, didn't really change since my last video about scanning film, so feel free to check that one out. When I just started uh, digitizing my own film. Uh, at first I had uh, Epson V600. It seemed like scanner could not capture the grain correctly. And what I also didn't like about scanner, it produced some digital noise and for me personally it was really hard to get rid of in Lightroom. So I decided to start scanning my film with a digital camera. Everything that I'm about to show have been accumulated within a couple of years. Nothing was sent to me and I will be as picky as possible. For digitizing film I use either Sony a7R2 or a7R4, uh, both of them doing the same thing and there's very little difference in their workflow. Now both of these cameras is a complete overkill for just film scanning, but the primary focus of these is actual work, so yeah. I happen to have them and I happen to use them for scanning my film as well. In my older video I have been using my uh, Sony with uh, zoom lens and a couple of micro rings, but even with that I wasn't able to focus really close and I had to crop a lot. So I was thinking of getting micro lens, but quickly I have figured those are extremely expensive and they're just not worth getting in my case because that would be the only thing I would use that macro lens for. Then I came across this Facebook group, it's called Digitizing Film with uh, DSLR or something like that. And some people were showing this very interesting, in my opinion, setups. Uh, they have been using enlarger lenses and bellow system on their digital cameras. So I started researching that. I already had larger lens because I was already uh, doing darkroom printing at home and the only thing that was missing was a bellow system. I was lucky enough to find uh, this uh, bellow system uh, on eBay. It is from Pentax. It takes M42 uh, lenses, which I tend to use on my 35mm cameras. The thread on uh, enlarger lens is M 39, so you would need a little step-up ring to fit uh, in larger lens into this bellow system. And to attach this bellow system into my Sony I had to get an adapter, but again I already had one because I do like using my digital camera with Helios lens, which also has M42 thread. Another difference between using macro lens for your camera and bellow system with enlarger lens is enlarger lenses they are made specifically for projecting from the negative uh, to the flat surface of paper and that way uh, the distortions they are either non-existent or they are very very minimal. Even when using specific macro lens. I actually tried that 90 millimeter macro for Sony camera and even that lens did have distortions. So yeah, that's just not what those macro lenses are for initially. So my current setup includes a copy stand, a camera, bellow system and enlarger lens. Usually I connect my camera to a computer and shoot tethered. If you want to learn more about how to connect a Sony camera to a Lightroom, uh, check out this video. The link will be in the description box below as well. So far I'm very happy with this setup and the results that it provides. 
Now let's look into different scanning systems that I already tried. The first one is uh, Lomography Digitalizer Plus. It looks like this. This is the most portable film scanning setup. With this one, you can scan 35 millimeter film and 120 film. This kit cost 75 bucks. This is the cheapest scanning kit you can possibly find right now. What I like about it uh, is this 35 millimeter film carrier. Uh, it allows to go really quickly through a roll of 35 millimeter film. The only thing about this particular film holder, sometimes it does have troubles to keep film flat when the film has a little bit more curve. This is the light panel. It can take uh, two uh, AA batteries or it can be plugged in into uh, the outlet or into computer, laptop, whatever. There's no information about CRI of this particular light source because this light panel is super portable. It's also not very bright, which can significantly increase the exposure time. But if you're shooting tethered and you don't actually touch the camera when digitizing film, it's not a big deal but it still can increase um, the time you're gonna spend on digitizing. I'm not a huge fan of using this for scanning 120. Every time you need to move a frame, you have to open this door. The magnets are pretty strong that hold film flat, but at the same time, it's really hard to open it. For scanning 120 film, I have been using Intrepid, except on those occasions when the film is extremely curvy. I don't want to spend much time on this particular scanning method because first and foremost, I got Intrepid for darkroom printing. Intrepid and negative holders don't have any like locking mechanism or anything like that. And they don't hold film flat. The light source is uh, pretty bright, so I have been using Intrepid Light plus a Lomo Digitalizer 35mm film carrier for scanning my 35mm film. Up until recent, when Intrepid stopped working. Another option for scanning 120 film is a negative supply basic film carrier. This is my newest addition to film digitizing kit. This one cost $149, but I got it for Black Friday and it was on sale for $99. This film carrier comes with different film masks depending on the ratio of 120 film that you shoot. I still don't know how I feel about this one. Um, I guess it is better than Lomo Digitalizer or uh, Intrepid scanning method because you can quickly move through a roll of 120 film. Uh, you don't have to open the carrier every time you need to move to next uh, exposure. I still find it a little bit tricky to feed a film through uh, this uh, film carrier, especially it becomes more challenging with films that have a more curve. Negative Supply promises that this film carrier uh, keeps film flat. In my experience, it does depend on the film. Again, with a more curvier curlier films, um, it's not perfectly flat. I personally find the price tag of $149 for this film carrier is a little bit questionable for what it is. So with this film carrier, I have been using these uh, also negative supply 4x5 basic um, light panel. It's got CRI of 97, which is good. The panel itself, it's very bright. It seems like it's nicely made. Uh, so far, I like it, uh, but let's see how long it's gonna last. Uh, full price for this panel is uh, $149, but I got it for uh, Black Friday and it was $99. Moving on to scanning 4x5 film sheets. Uh, for scanning 4x5, I still use this 
same a negative supply 4x5 uh, light panel and as far as a negative carrier I also decided to go with negative supply and got myself with a basic 4x5 film scanning kit. Now there are two versions when it comes to this kit. First one comes with uh, this uh, plastic frame and uh, two acrylic sheets and that cost 129 and another version of this kit, uh, there is the same uh, plastic frame uh, plus uh, two uh, anti-Newton rings uh, glass pieces and that one uh, goes for uh, $2.69. I am so glad I did not get the more expensive version with a &R glass. This kit is a nightmare to use. The way it's supposed to work, you put this uh, plastic frame on top of the light panel, then uh, there goes a first piece of either acrylic sheet or uh, A&R glass, uh, then you put the uh, film sheet and then you cover it with another uh, piece of either acrylic sheet or A&R glass. In theory it supposed to work. It's supposed to uh, keep the negative uh, very flat and allow to scan film sheet with borders. But in reality it doesn't work that way because it is impossible to keep those uh, pieces of glass or acrylic sheets clean and free from dust unless you're living in completely sterile 100% dust-free environment. So yeah, this is definitely didn't work for me and I do not recommend this method. So what I've been using instead is a good old uh, 4x5 negative uh, film carrier from traditional enlarger. I understand that uh, this enlarger film carrier it definitely will crop out some film borders but I don't really mind it because this film carrier actually can keep the negative flat and I am able to blow out the dust from the negative so I won't need to spend so much time on cleaning up the dust in a Lightroom. So this is my solution and my preferred method of scanning uh, 4x5 film sheets. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you in another one.